the STA Compact. Um, we're simulating what you would do um, to really find out what an issue is on any instruments. I don't care if it's a quality control or if it's the crashing needles or a gripping problem. And we're going to take you from the beginning. Okay, here's the main screen. I want to get into maintenance, so I hit escape, go over to maintenance, maintenance. Here's my user maintenance. Alt F10. My code for today, my code for today is bring the first number down, zero. Second number goes to the right, so and the third number goes to the left, so the next number is zero. Then three, seven, figure out the last two numbers, I go nine, ten, eleven, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty-one, twenty-one, uh, sixteen goes into twenty-one once, so the first letter is a one, and then I have five remainder. So the next letter is a five, and that should get us into uh, the service menu. By the way, you can only check that you can only do that code twice before it'll boot you out and won't allow you to uh, to get into the service and after that you have to re shut it shut it down okay here's the service maintenance I've got the robotics the first thing I'm going to go into for a general check is the um, endurance um, let's change that let's go into the fluidics first and do the fluidics first alright this is the fluidic screen I can hear my pump come on it's always a good thing my cleaning bottle is filled. Hi. Now let's go over to the pumps. First thing we're going to do is check out the needles. Generally, this would be for a quality control issue. All right, let's go over to the uh, instrument. Look at the needles. You might want to take a break here. Can you see the needles? Okay. All right, uh, we're going to put 20 pulses in needle number one and hit enter. There's our 20 pulses. I don't know if you can see it, but the fluid is coming straight down. It's not flaring off to the side. It's going right into the well. The well didn't overflow, which is a good thing. So the vacuum must be at least halfway working. And we're going to go to do the same thing for needle two. We're going to put 20 pulses in it. And it comes. it's a little of an angle, but that's not a big concern of mine. If it was a minor quality control, that might be a hint, but uh, that doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to do the same for needle number three, 20 pulses. Needle number three, that looks good. I'm coming straight down, going in the well. It's not overflowing. And that seems to be pretty normal. All right, next thing. That's to check really f that the needles aren't uh, restricted or defective. I'm going to take a little vial and I'm going to put this over my <coughs> waist, uh, waist bin here and I'm going to put another 20. By the way, you do not want to pulse these uh, one after another too many times. You want to take a little break between them, especially if you're doing a, uh, putting in like something like 50 pulses, which you would do if you were putting in uh, bleach or clearing the bleach out of it. Here's 20 pulses. I'm going to put it, my little uh, vial over needle number one, and I'm going to hit enter. And what I'm looking for is that solution should, should fall in between these two lines. That tells me my Valco pump is working. 3 ml, 4 ml. 3 ml is my bottom line, 4 ml is my top. I don't particularly care if it's too high. It's just going to be cleaning a little better. I will tell you if it's on the high side that you might get an operator complaining of uh, uses too much cleaning solution and it doesn't time out right. Um, I consider that a minor problem. Bottom line, between 3 and 4 ml is specs for 20 pulses. I now know my Valcor pump is adjusted and is proper. I'm going to try the same thing for needle number two. And for the most part, it should be approximately the same amount. There shouldn't be a drastic difference between a needle one and needle two. I'm not trying to get down to a specific, but eyeballing it, you can see that it's about the same. And that's the way it should be. There's only one Valcor pump. 
it, clean, it sends a solution through each needle. Um, thus it should always be the same pretty much. The reason I mention that is for, for some reason it is not the same. It's going to uh, be an indication of a bad needle. I'm going to do the same for needle number three. Again, that's just a quick way of checking that your needles aren't clogged. If I saw a big difference in just one of them, I'd, be, I'd, I'd look into it. And again, you can sit there and hopefully you can see that it's about the same. So now I know my Velcor pump is okay and I'm pretty comfortable with my needle is okay. And for the most part, I'm, I'm okay with the, 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 uh, <coughs> excuse me, the vacuum pump. But we're going to check vacuums. Now vacuum can cause you a lot of quality control issues and I'm going, I've got a vacuum gauge. Any gauge, there's three ports in the back. You can use any type of vacuum gauge. Uh, just the, this gauge makes it real easy. And I am going to, uh, through the service diagnostics, I'm going to turn on needle number one, or well number one. And hopefully you can see that that goes up to eight millibar. Eight millibar is what it should be. Not five, not six, eight millibar. If it's not at eight millibar, you have an issue. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be 7.5, but it should be eight millibar. All right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to turn through my service maintenance, um, the fluidic circuit, I'm going to turn off my vacuum pump. I consider this to be a somewhat important test. When I turn off my vacuum pump, you can see my needle does not drift downward. It should not. If it started drifting downward, it would be an indication that I have a leak somewhere. Usually it's in the EV valve, um, but it could be in the tubing. And as you can see from looking at this, that's as steady, and that's as it should be. So I'm going to turn my pump back on, and I am going to close uh, well number one, and I'm going to go to open well number two. Uh, you might be able to hear that. I'll put my gauge over number two. And it should come up to 8 millibar. Now there's a time sequence of how fast that should come up. Quite frankly, I'm not too worried about that. I just simply want to make sure that it gets to 8 millibar. 8 millibar is there. Again, I go and I change off, I turn off through the service. I change off, turn off the vacuum pump. And again, my 8 millibar should stay there which it is. That tells me I have no leaks in wash well number two. Okay, turn it back on. We're going to go over to well number three and do the same thing. Well number three should come up, eight millibar. And I am now after once it gets to eight millibar, I am going to turn it off. The vacuum pump is off and it should stay there. I know, now know my vacuum pump, or, or my vacuum system, is working fine. I'm going to take a second to show you one little tip. <coughs> Periodically, one of the common things is for needles to get in the wash well, and I usually do this with every time I do a PM. Or if I'm having any problems crashing needles or anything like that, it's just a common thing I do because it only takes a second. I take, usually it's a wooden applicator, but in this case I'm going to use an Allen wrench. And I take an Allen wrench and I put it down inside a wash well. Put it all the way down to the bottom. I take my finger so I know it, I mark it. This is how far that Allen wrench, wrench went into the wash well. It should be the same for needle number two. It shouldn't go down further, it should go down the same amount. I will tell you if you use a wooden applicator, wash well number one is a little skinnier way down there in the bottom. So, um, you can't use a wooden applicator. The bottom line is all these should be the same uh, distance. If they're not, they've got a BB stuck in them, which would cause two issues, crashing needles possibly, possibly intermittent, and the wash well will overflow. That's probably number two uh, reason for a wash well to overflow would be the BBs. Number one would probably be the EV valve. EV valve is something I would recommend keeping a spare of.